Hello. So this is Amy Lambelt from North Shore Acupuncture Center, and you've joined in for our series about being perimenopausal in a pandemic. And this is the third of our series. And today we're going to be talking about hot flashes and burning off what you no longer need. So I have a special guest that you might know if you were on my pandemic sleep tips. Um, Beth has been with us before. But Beth is an Eden Energy Medicine Clinical Practitioner and a Certified Warrior Goddess Facilitator. And she's the owner of Roots and Wings Energy in Evanston. Um, her journey as a healer actually began in nursing, like my mom, if my mom was on. Um, she's always been drawn to, carry, drawn to caring for the whole person, recognizing we are physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual beings with important needs on each level. Beth studied the Eden Energy Medicine under Donna Eden and her experienced faculty for over three years to become a certified practitioner. Um, so if you have questions as we go along today, please put those in comments and I'll make sure that we get those answered for you. And if you watch this after we're no longer live, you can still put your questions in there and I'll try to get answers back to you. So you're not missing out. Uh, so make sure you give us some likes and some hearts so that we know that you're watching. And Beth, uh, actually, before we get started, let's talk about hot flashes a little bit. So I brought a story that I loved that just helps shift the idea of hot flashes. And that was part of our title too. Um, and the story I heard from this book, A Woman's Book of Life by Joan Borisenko, not sure how to say her name, but it's a story about, there was a woman from France who when she was 47, shaved her head and went to Tibet to a monastery and pretended that she was a male llama. And while she was there, she experienced, she was one of the first Westerners to experience a lot of different rituals. But one of the rituals took place during a full moon where the monks all went into a cave and stripped naked in freezing temperatures and then wrapped themselves with wet sheets and used meditation to increase their body temperature enough to dry the sheets. And the reason for doing this is they believe that raising their body temperature that way burns away the mistakes that they've made, any er erroneous beliefs that they have, or ego attachments, all those things that keep us from being our true self. So I just love the beauty in that story and the idea of shifting your idea on hot flashes to be just a fire to purify those things that are no longer really part of yourself that you no longer need. The things that we add on to ourselves, you know, we're born as a real authentic person, but then we start getting these limiting beliefs or these false truths about ourselves or mistakes that we've made over time. And those hot flashes can help burn those away from you. So I thought that was beautiful. I couldn't agree more. And how um, shifting almost how we even think about hot flashes can shift the experience of a hot flash. And no doubt they're still difficult to deal with, but having a different sort of mind frame around it can help even a little bit. And it yeah, and some studies have shown that when you just change your mindset around it, that can actually reduce the number that you have and the duration and how intense they are. So absolutely. shifting that. Absolutely, yes. And it, it kind of goes along with this whole shift, this really transformation of what menopause, the whole menopause puzzle period is that we're shifting and all this energy that our bodies used to go into sort of preparing, you know, preparing for the baby really is now yeah. shifted and it's available to us in a co completely different way that we haven't experienced before. So there's going to be a little bit of fire that comes with that big transformation that happens, but then we are having access to all this energy that, <laughs> that, you know, that I think is really exciting because it's like now that's available for you, like as an independent soul to what's, you know, the next chapter in your life. So to kind of shift that whole thinking around um, 
bad or because I'm growing older, that means something negative. I've, you know, society says we have too many wrinkles and um, we're not, you know, good enough because of that. And it's like shifting that completely to help us um, feel more in this sort of natural progression of our own cycle. And um, other cultures do that too. Like it's menopause is not an ailment, right? It's like part of the transformation. And other cultures see it that way and they have much fewer symptoms, kind of back to that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. There's cultures where the women look forward to it because that when you achieve that stage of your life, you're revered for your wisdom, um, for your intuition being stronger, for your creativity, all these positive things that come with it are valued. And so people want to be in menopause because it's a higher status. Yes, it elevates them. Yeah, it's true. And I think um, I was doing a little research and in Japan, the word for menopause actually means renewal years. And and then there's associated with just energy. So I thought that was interesting too. And they have very few symptoms. So it's funny how, yeah, how much just like we were saying, changing your, how you think about it can shift um, internally what's what's happening. So, yeah. Which but, fits well with what you do because you're connecting the mind, the body, the spirit, um, and how that all impacts each other. So for people that don't know, can you tell us a little bit more about Eden Energy Medicine and what that is, what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's, I feel like it's empowering people from the inside out. So it's allowing people access to their own energy body, which is, you know, meridians, it's chakras, it's the aura, it's all those, um, and, and, and many more um, systems combined that make up your sort of energy anatomy. So the Eden Energy Medicine kind of pulls those all into one modality and helps to um, support where there's energy blockages and kind of ha- have some release, but also remind you where you have your strengths. So um, the empowering part of it is that there's energy exercises, which I'll teach you a few today that you can take with you and use anytime that you need them to work with your own energies and shift. Then as you shift your energy, you shift how you feel physically, how you feel in your emotional body and how you feel spiritually. So it's, it's really this, um, really nice system. I've um, gained a whole new perspective, you know, especially coming from the my nursing background, that it just encompasses so much more of who we are. So yeah, I can't yeah. wait to share more with you. Um, we've talked about this before with sleep, and it's true of menopause symptoms as well. When our chi isn't moving freely, that always exasperates any symptoms that you might have. And that's especially true of hot flashes. So there can be different underlying patterns that cause hot flashes, but when you and I are not working with someone individually, just a generic thing that we can help people with is making sure that those energy blockages are, um, that we can give you tools to take care of those because that will minimize hot flashes um, no matter what symptom you have, that usually adds on to it. So it's a, a good broad thing that we can give people to start helping address their issues. Exactly. Cause it's sometimes it's just getting the kink out of the hose, you know, and there's very simple things you can do to help that. So that flow, that energetic flow can continue. Yeah. yeah. Um, Great. So are there some tips that you can show us? Yeah. So I have a couple of things. I, I've always, I get overexcited and I think, oh, I want to share so much, but I got to keep it (laughs) to what we can do here. But I wanted to first share, um, the first tip would be when you feel the hot flash coming on. So kind of getting really practical and and user friendly. So the moment you kind of feel that heat starting to rise, this technique is most beneficial, like just as it's starting, maybe after if, if it's already kind of, you know, the blazing fire, maybe it's not quite as effective as if you kind of feel it just coming on and you use this, this point. So um, we call it the hot flash button in, um, in energy medicine, but it's, if you find your uh, navel, so your belly button and you go about two inches below, so I'm just, I'll just stand up a little bit here, two inches below your navel. And if you take your middle fingers and just 
as you feel that hot flash coming on, push in very, very deeply to that point. So you're, you're two inches below your navel, kind of just above your pubic bone, not quite. Um, and you're pushing in very deeply to this hot flash button that helps to kind of quell that fire as it's, as it's rising up. So you may um, try that. And as you push in um, with both of your middle fingers, you want to take a couple deep breaths and it almost brings everything down. If you can feel that you're in your second slash first chakra area and you're kind of bringing everything down and then you can imagine it even flowing off of your legs, like coming down your tailbone and flowing off each of your legs as you pressing into this um, button here. So using that sort of an, as an in the moment technique can be very helpful. And is um, it important to use your middle finger for that? It is important to use your middle finger. Um, that is a connection to the fire element. Um, so you're connecting that in as you connect to the, to the, it's another fire point, but, um, the hot flash point at, at your belly using that middle finger there can make that the, sort of energetic connection. I think we might've talked about it before, but that was my children's favorite point because they could say, mom, look at right. if nine. <laughs> <laughs> so in Chinese medicine, it's a pericardium. Point, which is a wrapper around your heart and the heart is associated with fire. Um, right. So beautiful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that can be one you can pull out at any time and it, and it doesn't look too awkward, you know, <laughs> if you're out in public. Um, the other one. So speaking of we fire. Have a, we have a question before you go on. Okay. Um, and it is, can you do that to someone like a husband for a wife? And sure. uh, if, you're, if you're out in public, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> Might look a little funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can have someone else do that to you. You'll need to tell them, uh, give them feedback about pressure so that, you know, you're in a still comfortable uh, situation. But yeah, yeah, you can definitely have someone else do this for you. For sure. <laughs> but do it at your own risk. If yeah, she's already yeah. at the place where she's on fire. Uh, that might be dangerous, Dan. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> totally. I can, sh yeah, I can show you a couple of things that maybe the partner could do a little easier for you. All right. <laughs> um, but I'll show you another one that you can do for yourself and it um, release. It. It's a very um, helpful releaser of energy. So speaking of the fire, um, sometimes we need a little bit of water to help quell the fire that may be raised, rising a bit. So what you can do is cross your hands because you're going to get a couple couple things happening here. Um, find your where your I'll just show you the point. Find where your collarbones come to a point here and you're going to go down and out about an inch or so. Yeah. And you'll feel a little divot there and then cross your hands and really um, massage deeply into that those divot points. So this is we're connecting to uh, kidney meridian, which is part of the water element. And as the hot flashes come on, um, we want to also pay attention to the water element so it can help balance some of that fire that's happening in the body. So um, rubbing deeply here, and this is an intersection point, um, and it helps your whole meridian system run forward as opposed to running backward, which can happen when you get a little bit uh, fatigued. So starting here with that point, and then with one of your hands, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to hook in at the top of your collarbone. You can see what I'm doing here, right above the bone. On top of it? On top of it. Yep. You're going to hook in there. And then as you take a deep breath in, you're going to move your um, head away from your hand. So the opposite direction. And as you do that, you're going to stretch that neck and slide your fingers along the top of the collarbone. Do you feel the stretch? as you slide them out towards your shoulder. Yes. Do you feel that stretch? Yeah. This one's called dousing the fire. <laughs> so take another deep breath in. And as you breathe out, turn your head and slide your fingers over as you feel that stretch in your neck. 
there's a lot happening here in the neck. It's kind of where the yin meets the yang. And um, you're allowing some of that trappedness to release and including some of that fire to release. All right, so we, we can't be unbalanced. We're gonna to go to the other side. So hook into that other um, collarbone that I usually just use the first two fingers. And then as you deep breath in, and then let it out and slide those fingers over. And you can even, as you stretch the neck over uh, the opposite way, you can even use um, sort of a, um, a grounding breath as you do this, which is affectionately known as the Darth Vader breath. <laughs> Sound moves energy as well, but I'll just show you how it goes. It's kind of in the back of the throat breath. It goes like this. So using that breath as you're, as you're breathing in and out with this stretch can also be very grounding. And, and probably um, keep your family away from you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very true. So um, that one is um, helpful for kind of quelling the fire and bringing in a little bit of that water element and releasing some of that trappedness that comes around the neck area. Um, so the other one that's pretty easy that you can use at any time, again, working with how to, um, so in energy medicine and um, in the meridian system, there's something called triple warmer, which really governs our metabolism and the heat in our body. And so we're gonna work with that meridian as we do this exercise. So you can start here, um, cover your eyes with your hands and take a deep breath in. And as you let your breath out, come to your temples, bring your fingers to your temples. Yeah, and then just let them rest here for a moment. And then at your next in-breath, you're gonna smooth the hair behind your ears. Just come around the ears, the back of the ears, the back of the neck, and then you're gonna land on the top of your shoulders. That, that part that always feels really tense, you're gonna land right there. <laughs> And give it a nice squeeze. Yeah, here. Good. And then from here, cross your arms, come all the way down your arms, hands, and then you end here at your heart. So that is sort of calming that triple warmer energy that really kind of gets our fire heat it up and it helps to kind of balance that that energy with our fire that one is easily done by yourself but to answer the partner question from earlier your partner can just trace from your um, um the crease of your eye from your temple here you can just trace around your ear down your neck down the back of your shoulder back of your arm and then off your fourth finger so if that would feel okay for someone else to do for you, you, you can certainly have them do that in a very sort of loving, gentle fashion. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be kind of the same effect as what I just showed you here. Mm -hmm. um, if that, if you wanted to bring a partner in on that one, but that can be used also for balancing your, the stress in your body. The one I just showed you here or, tracing like this. You can do this to yourself too. Because as we go through menopause, helping our stress is even more important, <laughs> like it isn't important already, but um, the estrogen production, it gets assigned to the adrenals instead of our ovaries. And so helping our stress response become more balanced allows that estrogen that production to happen instead of producing all of the adrenaline and cortisol that the adrenals do when we're stressed. So they can't do both at the same time. So helping to kind of soothe your adrenal and your um, um, stress hormones with a little bit of that calming exercise can help that balancing effect so that your adrenals can in, in fact produce estrogen at this transition time that you need. 
So an added benefit there. <laughs> Perfect. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. And hi, thanks for joining. We have lots of supportive testosterone on today. Oh, perfect. <laughs> or all the guys that are commenting. <laughs> I'm sure, because I'm sure there's quite a few things that come up with hot flashes in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Uh, yeah, is, is, I can give you one quick other one, or we can we can stop yeah. right here. No, okay. that's fine. Okay, so these are really helpful balancing hormone points. They're on the head. And if you take the heel of the hand and place it right here at your hairline, and then your middle finger will, will gent just naturally fall at the top of your head. So you're gonna connect to the heel of your hand to the top of your head. And then this hand, you're gonna kind of do like two fingers and a thumb, connect those three. And if you could go from this point, so that like your third eye point, all the way through your head, out the back of your head, you're gonna connect there. And here you're connecting with um, different hormone points that connect to the energies there and you're balancing the metabolism of them. The, um, uh, in the back of the head is a triple warmer point, the top of the head is a heart point and the heel of your hand is a liver point. Um, and these are um, neurovascular points that all connect with hormone balancing. So this is like a little energy vitamin, if you will for your hormone balancing as you're going through menopause. Even if you're connecting with this mm, once a day for like two minutes, if you hold this pose, your energies will sort of come into alignment uh, in, in, in relation to your hormone, hormones. So hormones are super powerful, but I, I feel like um, energy kind of governs hormones. Hormones govern a lot of other things. So. It's, um, it'll um, give you a lot of benefit to even just kind of sit with this. That's kind of like a, um, uh, a maintenance piece where the hot flash button and some of these other things are, you know, helpful in actually in the, in the, in the event. Yes. <laughs> so hope that's helpful. Yeah, that's very helpful. I like the idea of the little energy vitamin. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We need those well, two. This is very helpful information. If people are interested in working with you more to talk about what their specific diagnosis is and what's causing hot flashes for them or hormonal imbalances, how do they work with you? Yeah, they can contact me um, uh, probably through email or uh, my phone is the easiest, but um, my website is roots and then like root in the ground roots, uh, wings, energy.com. And my email is just Beth at roots, wings, energy.com. And I'll so put your the easiest wings for energy.com. Correct. Yeah. Roots. It's plural. Mm -hmm. I'll have that pop up on here. Okay, cool. Um, and you are seeing people now virtually, correct? I am. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's been a little bit, uh, different interaction, but it works because actually, um, people are really, uh, connecting with the exercises on themselves and sort of in a different way than in person. When I, in session, I do a lot of things, um, connecting for them. And so some of my clients are like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm connecting it myself. So beneficial in that way, self-care. Yeah. There are some, uh, golden lining or silver linings to this. I and know, I, right? Dan called out why um, we have the male support here. If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> oh, isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole vibe of the house changes. Yes. <laughs> um, and people, you have some videos as well, right? Are those on YouTube or what's the best way to find those? Yeah, actually on my website, I put into a video library. So based on the symptom, then there's the videos that listed that would help that symptom. So that's probably the easiest to access, but I also have a YouTube channel under Roots Wings Energy, but they're, they're nicely categorized in that library if that helps you know people find them easier. All right. So people should reach out to you and get some help with their yeah. hormone balancing. Find out how to do those vitamins, get some more vitamins. That's right. Uh, 
Thank you for taking time to meet with us today. I know hot flashes is a hot topic. Sorry, pun intended. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Must be that bad, bad energy running off of me. I have dad jokes. Um, if you are joining, just want to let you know what we have scheduled because these are going through the first week of June. So tomorrow there'll be a discussion about body positivity and that is at noon tomorrow. Next week we have discussions about finding your inner queen, joint pain, uh, finding your voice, speaking your truth, movement and meditation. And then the week following that, we're gonna have discussions about exploring your creativity uh, yoga for bone health, uh, sexuality and perimenopause, um, hormone re uh, HRTs, and um, I'm missing one. Oh, pelvic health. So we pretty much have almost everything covered. So yeah. look at the Facebook, my Facebook page. Make sure you follow North Shore Acupuncture Center. Um, it makes it easier to find the lives when we go live. And um, Beth, we have someone that wants to connect with you for Parkinson's disease. So I know energy medicine is important for that. And yeah, I would recommend reaching out to her through Beth, uh, Beth at rootswingsenergy.com yeah. and start a conversation that way. Sure. But thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, happy to. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye-bye.